Welcome to our live on this show Wednesday morning. Thank you for joining us. I am Moriah Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Even did James Bond just, just appeared. <laughs> Traffic again, Abi. Bele. I can't believe leaving home five thirty. It's not worth it. So the children are on break, and of course, I have extra minutes to go. Smooth ride all the way to maybe Ilasa, and then we're stuck in traffic. I found out they're packed. They've um, you know, reduce the road to the, only the service lane, and there are cars parked on that service lane. There's one way on that service lane, and there's the right traffic on the mm. same road. Of course, it's madness. Mm -hmm. right. But when you so, ask, okay, the service, and there was no, are they fixing the main road? No traffic experts, because that's what last night is supposed to be for. Mm. But there are policemen, soldier men, everybody trying to beat Nigerians into order. Mm. So we're just sitting there for hours, not wondering what is happening. So you locked down. Yeah. Yes, because I used I used the map, and it says traffic was free. Oh, and so right. I did not look for an alternative way. Right. And just at right. that point, there was madness. Well, eh, at least thank God you made it to the show. I know it's not yeah. easy for you. I just drive at the risk of my life. Even me, I know what Sorry. I'm doing. Well, eh. Sorry. Hi, dear Mariam. Fine. Quickly. I'm feeling bad because I came here to say to um, Lagos State Government that they are doing well with oh. the roads and traffic. For real? I'm Which area are you living you. in? Uh, so all the way from home to this place, I noticed throughout this week. And you know how, because the roads work, it does not really register. Yeah. So I'm thinking, where did Legosians go? Where's yeah. everybody? <laughs> <laughs> the, the driver was saying that, you know, the roads have been fixed, no potholes, yeah. so that traffic... So when it's not rich Nima's so area? No, Nima's area is not... Yeah, well, mine, mine is even a state, a, a, a public... What, what I would say, the court has taken notice of, a judicial notice of, mm. they're working there. Mm. So you'd expect every single agency right. that is of note or worthy of note mm. should be on should the be available. Even the federal yeah. safety should be no there. Yeah. No yeah. proper coordination. So we are helpless. I have mm. pictures of Nigerians doing the traffic by themselves. Mm. I sent so it to the, the agency yeah. and there was really no it's reaction. Yeah. Too, so that we can retweet but it when you post it now, they'll say, hey. Yeah, don't yeah, yeah. 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 How are you doing? Talk very I'm enjoying my afro. My husband was telling me this one day. Very soon now, you cover this hair again. I said, you like the beauty of the hair. You don't understand and the stress of maintaining it. So, um, on Monday, people were thinking it was my hair. Yes, it is my hair, <laughs> everything mine, and um, I'm flaunting it for today and maybe for the rest of the week. Yeah, and but really next week, good. I'll <laughs> I might cover it up, but then enjoy it for today. And so except someone is paying me, for what? yes, somebody, if somebody is paying me to flaunt my hair. Endorsement, product line. I beg, I beg, I beg, they pay me to front my hair. Leave that one. I will front my hair. Thank our friends from Ada Small. They thank sent you, us mugs for Ada Small. So we're going to be giving. It has your view pictures on it, and um, they sent us a mug uh, for wow. our audience. Yes, you'll be drinking a huge <gasps> big wow. coffee. You know. So thanks to Ada Small. So anytime you come to our show, you get. Only yes. first timers from oh, for after good. for after this week. Yeah. From next week is only first timers. Okay. So once you get your mug this week, you're not getting next week. Only if you're a first timer. Yeah. But thank you very much to Ada Small for giving us this lovely mug for our audience. I love this. And we're expecting mug. more gifts. Um, I spoke to Chief Mrs. Falasha Diokoya, and she's sending us gifts from Eleganza. Whoa! Yes. She was so pleasant. I mean, I was really surprised that that woman is such a nice lady, and I was shocked that she was really very receptive. You know, you think that this will have airs around there, but they don't. Mm. This woman actually was very kind, and she said, Murad, don't worry, I'll send you. Just how many do you need? I said, ah, okay, oh, it's about our send. So she's going to send us this week. Hopefully, we'll see if we can get more from her, but at least let us first all get this week first. Yeah. And see if we can get them for festive season. So yeah. well, hopefully the gifts get here before the end of the show so we can give it to our audience. All right, we're going to go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll go through the front pages of the newspaper. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Right, we're going to start with the punch. Nigeria to spend 750 billion naira on fuel subsidy in 2020. Buhari, three governors up to Egypt for peace forum. Retired major Garden Lagos refinery dies in guest house. Forgive me, Fayoshi begs aggrieved Ikiti PDP members. Uh, National Human Rights Commission takes Nigeria's rights abuse to international bodies and Senate probes CBN over 20 trillion on remitted stamp duty. Okay, 
Buhari and three governors are traveling to... Yeah, so Buhari and um, three governors are traveling to Egypt for the As One Forum. And the As One Forum is an agenda for sustainable peace and development in Africa. So there, it's just to address the interconnections between peace and development in Africa. That was said by Femi Adishina as he was explaining this um, trip that they are going on. So on the 11th and the 12th of this month is when the forum is um, taking place. So. Okay, we'll see all what right. that happens. Major headline. Major, I might just spend some 50 billion yes. on fuel subsidy so, in 2020. So, punch did the calculations on behalf of the government. What they call uh, recovery mm. now has been done. And what we expend on subsidy is about 650, uh, 750 billion naira. In that, and that's what's projected for 2020. Mm. They've done the calculations based on what is provided for with the new budget. Mm. I, I, I want to quickly use this story to align with the Minister for Works and Housing that said that, who, who said that, you know, if we could just stop paying subsidy, we'll have money to fund all this our infrastructure that we're trying to build around the country. Yeah. We so should rethink this. So this the question is, is how many people benefit from subsidy payments? Because when you travel a little outside the southwestern region, everybody is buying fuel above above the regular pump, pump, price. pump exactly. price. So who is really benefiting from this? Well, mm -hmm. and reaching a few chunk of people on this a massive much. scale. Massive. 750 mm -hmm. billion naira mm -hmm. that can do many other things for right, us in this country. Exactly. We really should okay, rethink let's it. Let's move on to the nation. A Shomwale yeah. wicked trade punches over Paul's <laughs> rights. Please allow me to demonstrate this punch. <laughs> Just a picture, you are in the, the ring. In the ring. The ring. So the first punch was. That was Oshomoli. His first point, let me tell you what he did. He said, PDP, they not, are not practicing what they are, uh, they, not, they not practice what they are preaching today yeah. for over 16 years. That was the first point. Second mm -hmm. does, that was the chairman of PDP. Mm -hmm. We thought with two punches, boos, boos. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. what, was what did this? he say? He said, first, Oshomoli, when he was governor of Edo State, he came to the villa mm -hmm. to thank the president at the time yeah. that um, there was one man, one vote, that they during the elections. Mm -hmm. That today, do we have one man, one vote? Especially in Bayelsa and Kogi State elections. Okay. That was the first point. Second point, he says that during their own time, there was occupying Nigeria. No journalists were arrested. They did not, they did not disobey court orders. Mm -hmm. Nobody were, was jailed. And it was freedom of expression. That was the second point. Oshomo then returned with another point. Woos, just one point. <laughs> he said um, that if there's any state in our country that the elections are won with um, blood stains, is River State. It's on record. Where there's a record where military officials' heads are get, yeah. get knocked out. Yeah. Yeah. The second has now landed the final punch. Boom. Boom. <laughs> he said that Yahya Bello's certificate of return is blood stained. Yeah. Referring mm. to I agree. The, sure. uh, I agree. We the all agree. So that was the, those are the punches. I was pretty, and so who won? Uh, well, there's no winner. There's there's winner. There's there's no winner, winner because there's... there was blood on both oh, sides. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that is... this is the kind of interaction I want to see between political parties beyond just insulting them, constructive criticism on no, what the person is doing wrong. Add injury. Let me even injury. add salt to injury. Mm -hmm. This same punch, and I have to uh, recognize the writer. Uh, Nation. Uh, Nation, Olukorede Yishao. He said this, and I'd like to please give me a few minutes to quote this. Mm -hmm. Their supporters draw blood hmm. regularly. Machetes are used. Guns even boom from Kogi to Bayelsa, other mm -hmm. states. They are all killing themselves. But twice this year, the APC PDP chairman see each other and they hug like friends. Mm. Mm. Um, let me skip with that. They hugged and smiled. They joked and exchanged high five. Their messages, to their composure seems that there's no politics of bitterness. I hope their supporters will heed and, and will continue. Will they continue to the drop blood? Yeah, this is the, the picture. Yeah. And that's the picture. Yeah. So they, were, they are killing they hug each other. They hug each other. Our own youths are killing each other. Yeah. You die Look for these that. people, and yet, there they are, friends. Mm. The irony of the whole situation. Mm. So it's important that we understand these things. And when your young people, your brothers, your sisters are going to the roads, killing themselves, remind them that this we are fighting for. They are, they are hugging each other. Friends. Before we move on quickly, though, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. a round of applause. Yeah. Before we move on, um, the situation that affects everybody is that the electric, electric, electricity workers begin strike today. Mm. 
-hmm. And they've given, I took the story 21 mm -hmm. days ago where they gave ultimatum that we're giving you 21 days to resolve this issue that has been ongoing since 2013. And they said that they heard nothing from uh, Minister of Power um, Saleh Maman and that expired yesterday. That ultimatum expired yesterday and that they're going on strike. They have this issue of s workers of the union sacked without any, the payments are not made to them, gratuity is not paid to them and they didn't get paid, they have not gotten pension and they want this issue resolved within 21 days Nigeria did not answer them. Now we might have blackouts. Can we deal with this issue before they go on strike? Right. Yeah, just, Moving, I just hope this story is in other pa uh, pages. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's the sure woman it's, leader story. Just yeah, a sure it's it's Let's move on to Bangalore. Okay. I'm not taking another story. Mm. Should we arrest, arrest reps to probe DSS over invasion of, uh, of courtroom? Um, when Nigeria must borrow $22.7 billion now, it will take 25 years to reduce doctors shortage in Nigeria, says NMA. Police parade main suspect in murder of Kogi PDP woman leader. Buari appoints Adamu CBN Deputy Governor Amcon Chairman. Shore What We Told DSS by Vanguard Publisher. And we get tackles of Shemali at Abuja book launch. Okay, so you want to talk about the... Yeah, uh, so the um, ring leader for the um, people who attacked the late woman leader, his name is Adiche Ocholi, and he's been arrested. And they're being paraded, six of them. And he confessed that he was hired by a by an APC chief team. You see, this is the part of stories I don't like. When somebody um, confesses, let us also know the name mm -hmm. of the person. So he says by an APC chief team, and that um, they were asked to burn down the house, although they were, they were not aware that she was in the house at the time. That's a lie. But that they stood there and waited for the house to burn down before they left that Very area. Impossible. That's I impossible. Know the, neighbors, she was the neighbors here. talked about her screaming, struggling. She went to the window and she couldn't well, come yes. in. Yes. Yeah, I just so hope that they get prosecuted and I convicted. Do hope so. The Human Rights International Day, um, it was given by United Nations, and now a statement from the UN representative, Matthew AJK, says 70 million Nigerians, 70 million face challenges of health and education and that these are core areas that the Nigerian youth should be encouraged and supported. Young people should be respected for their role, cannot be overemphasized, and we must celebrate young people and society by marching for peace and equality regardless of status, saying that there is a challenge with our education and health sector. And this is something we already know. Can we work on it? So the new compost that was uh, appointed by President Buhari, in conformity with the law now that mm. requires that a CBN deputy governor must head AMCON, mm. unlike what we had before, um, my learned senior, Banire, was a lawyer mm. and he wasn't in any way close to finances. the fin finances. So just because people are saying that they have sacked you know the they did not yeah. sack him. They had to just regularize things to confirm. And then the yes. conversation of maybe where he's from, either the north or from the southwest. <laughs> Yeah, the it's conversation, conversation of the yeah. is still on. The yeah. People are talking about it. Mm. Moving on to Daily Sun, Catholic bishops angry over injustice. Southeast, a boy lead in infertility and infant mortality. That's good stuff. Mm. And APC PDB clash over Buhari. I think uh, Buhari names you. I'm coming to chairman. So let's move on very quickly to the Nigerian Tribune. Tribune, agent of national unity says, our deeds. Let's find a story we've not taken. Uh, Disquiet over Banyere's removal as African chairman and our... Free education policy doesn't cover Wayek, Neko payments says, or your government. Did you see all your governors? Uh, Kekenap, is it Kekenap? Really? No, bike. No, the bike. Oh, their bikes with uh, three bikes uh, We just, hmm. <laughs> anyways, let's just move on. Let's not, let's not, have let's not, let's not comment on it. Let's just keep they watching. But have you it's, it's not in the papers. It's not, yes, it's it's not. Okay. in the papers. Daily trust, borrowing inevitable, the FG tells lawmakers. EU Amnesty International say violence growing in Nigeria. LCCI experts say Nigeria should expect less from 2020 budget. Senate probes CBN over 20 trillion on remitted stamp duties. Um, police parade six suspects over killing of woman leader. Okay, go ahead. So we have issues with the um, 20 trillion naira that was supposed to be remitted concerning tax. Um, stamp duty that all of us are paying and it's hurting. You would have, you'd think that the money would go directly to the government coffers and be of benefit to this borrowing situation we have. No, the banks still have the money. The challenge is that there, is a, there's a, there's, there, there are issues between NIPOST, which is the one collecting stamp duty, and FIRS, which is a revenue generating yeah. um, um, arm of government. So 
um, FRS has taken um, Stampos up on saying that you don't have a right to generate funds. The funds should come to us. Naipos is saying we own Stampa, so we should collect the money. Right now, mon money is sitting. We cannot benefit from using it. And tax officials, are, a lot of people are saying this. I think the House of Assembly, the House of Reps, is the House of Reps should look so through it. They should please help us the number of years that this money has been deducted. And the interest are not remitted. The interest yes. rates on the, we, mm -hmm. we should get interest from the banks for who haven't remitted it because they've used the money. Yes. It wasn't on lockdown, so that we're not losing entirely. Okay. Nigerians okay. had to pay for this. Mm -hmm. you know and so mm -hmm. we shouldn't be all right unfortunately that's all we can take on front page review when we come back hmm. we'll discuss a few hot topics stay <laughs> with us we'll juicy back. stay tuned your view will be right back welcome back to your view Right, thanks for staying with us. Henceforth, according to publication on the Punch newspaper, and I quote, as a symbolic demonstration of our protest against autocracy and military style repression, Punch and digital platforms, most especially Punch.com, will henceforth prefix Buhari's name with his rank as a military dictator in the 80s major general and refer to his administration as a regime until they purge themselves of their insufferable contempt of rule of law. <sighs> you can join the conversation on 0708066814. You can also tweet us at TVC Connect, please hashtag YourViewTVC so we can read your tweets. So Punch has officially come out to say that they'll begin to prefix our president's name as General Major General Muhammad Buhari, and that's in protest of the um, incessant um, reports Abuse of, of the um, of desecration the of the rule of law and um, the recent rearrest of um, other journalists and so forth. Especially and in protests yes. for the desecration of the courtroom. Yes. They also mentioned that, that the courtroom being violated, court orders being violated, accumulation of all these things that signified what brought the presidency, who was voted in, who now displays the, um, um, carries out a military-like administration. So they said that they will call him a military president, they will call him major general, and they will call his, the system we're running now a regime so as to buttress that this is how Nigerians feel. And, you know, sadly, a lot of Nigerians feel this way. A lot of Nigerians feel like we're in a regime. We're in a regime where we can't talk. Okay. We're in a regime where we can't express ourselves. Let me quickly just align with Poncho. <laughs> because, uh, yes, it, can, it could be any of us tomorrow. Yes. Mm. This, I sit on this table all the time and I, I talk against self-help. I talk against people resorting to helping themselves when there's a system, we have an it's institution and following due process. So when we no longer trust that due process to take its cause, people mm -hmm. no longer believe that if you can have your day in court, you can mm. be convicted or acquitted, then there's a serious problem. Mm -hmm. When the court, which is the third arm of government and is not a dependent arm of government such that the Neutral. sitting judge will give an order and will wait for the president to give another order for the agencies to execute it. When a sitting judge in any capacity, starting from all the courts, mm -hmm. sits in their chambers and gives an order, that order becomes the law, no matter what is written. Mm. And the agencies that are supposed to carry it out should immediately fall into action. Mm. When they fail to do it, the head or whoever appointed the heads of, heads of those agencies should immediately replace them, which is why I joined people calling for the, rep the replacement of the head of the SSS. Mm. Because if you find it difficult to follow court orders and you need to second it, you don't know what democracy is. Mm. You don't even understand how a constitution but the works. the angle I'd like us to take this conversation to Nima is the role of media. I know you're taking us to no, the, the, the issue I, of the rule of I, media. I, 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 want to, I want to lay credence yes. to why Punch will say this before yes. people will sit at home and say, ah, Punch to join one which is why I'm trying to buttress right. what might be going through the heads of punch. So we have a democratic system, and in a democratic system, our constitution has given itself the entire powers to, for, what, for, 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 for being the beginning and the root of everything that happens. Right. Mm -hmm. So everything that contravenes the constitution that we have on ground becomes null and void to that extent that it contravenes mm. the constitution. Mm. Once we can no longer, uh, you know, to, 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 we can no longer um, guarantee the, 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 the powers of that constitution, we have a problem with our democracy. We now run a regime. So the president, as the appointer, 
of the head of the SSS. Should have, have obligation. reacted right. immediately. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's the that's thank you for right, thank yeah. for laying that foundation for us because, I mean, we're also part of what I would like us to focus on is the role the media plays uh -huh. in this because many people have said that the media has the civil society has almost been silent. But in the last few weeks, one week, one week or so, mm -hmm. we've seen civil society come out. I saw um, Yemi Adamaleko said it yesterday mm -hmm. very clearly that they're giving the presidency 14 days ultimatum that if they did not they release Chowere, they're going to march. So obviously, civil society is standing up. Media also has taken a stand. At least one part, one, one, media. one media has taken a stand on this. It, 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 it would be nice to hear what Nigerians feel. I'd like to hear your views on this. But let me yeah. come to Mariam. Yeah, so, um, you know, for a lot of us who are positive and optimistic and always looking you know the to see the, the the bright side or the good side of something it, it's getting harder and harder to be able to defend some things so we uh, some of us had great um, expectations of this administration and um, especially in the first term when something like that this happened um, the DSS I think stormed the National Assembly and the vice president at the time called for the, I think, the firing of the head of the DSS at the time. It just gave us like a new hope where we finally have our heads screwed on right. We finally know what the rules are. And then to take us backwards mm. in the second term when we should be getting better, you know? So for those of us that have sat down here and, and, and defended yeah. the government, defended the system, what are we supposed to say mm. now? What are mm. you telling us? In so we would want for the president, really, because we, some of us still have some hope, mm. we would like for him to come right. out and speak yeah. against this. We need him to take to, action. Uh, take action. Yeah. No yes. service. Just take there have been more protests, because I know that even Wale Shenka actually wanted to give um, the vice president an award. Very, mm -hmm. he, actually, he had to cancel that award, because in the process also of what is going oh, on here. Yeah. Um, I strongly I feel that um, the democracy we have, the democracy that the Jonathan-led administration handed over to um, our current administration is different from what we're experiencing. I sit here and I have people call me to be careful of what I'm saying. Yeah. And that is why I want to applaud Punch for speaking up concerning this, because we've yeah. seen a government where they can shut down Punch tomorrow, yeah. saying that what they did is hate speech. Yeah. They will shut it down, and the court will say, open it, and they will not open. Mm. We've had precedents of that. Right. But I am happy that the, uh, the editor of Punch was willing to daring. put was daring enough to mm -hmm. say that whatever would happen, we yeah. as the media must speak up concerning yeah. this country, because Ooh. it can happen to anybody. So. Yeah. I'm happy that we're doing this. However, it is hurtful, it is painful for me because I campaigned for this administration. I campaigned, I went door to door knocking. I'm not a card carrying member of APC, but I felt that, oh, this man has, this is integrity. Mm. There is change. I was change. going door to door. I didn't have my, my, I, my, my voter's card, but I ensured everybody in my building went out to vote. That was the least I could do. I sat down here and I was campaigning and I'm forced to swallow words. my words uh, and sit down and be like, ah, man, ah, we are in it all. Why? Because mm. we, it's, it's the least we expect mm. that the president would be the president of Nigeria. Mm. Not for himself call. or self-interest, but for the country. Mm. And what it looks like is that it is for his own interest. We are okay. not seeing that for the country. Okay, let me take this call. <laughs> Prince Oladujoye, thanks for calling. Are you there? Hello. Morning, sir. Go ahead, please. Hello? You're live. Go ahead, please. Hello? Sorry, Mr. You're listening to your TV. I have to turn you off. Hello? Okay. So I would, I would like to quickly say that nobody has said that um, um, Omar Ole calling for a revolution would not have gotten a reaction from government. No, nobody's saying that. But what I question is if government knew they needed to get a court order to detain him, and even went to court to get an extension of that order. And when they were fined for detaining him beyond his, when his bail had been perfected, they paid the, du they, the, the, the dues. Mm -hmm. And then, simple, if you, you are the SSS. If you fear that Omoye Ele Showore is trying to leave this country, put a man on him. And there's a man on Showore. Anytime Showore appears in court, there's a man from the DSS right behind him every time he's sitting. Mm. Moving but around with him. So what, what exactly was the fear? Mm. No, it's what was important? Shiwari. Yes, it's important to it's know that it's, it's, not, it's not just about Shiwari. It's beyond Shiwari. Shiwari. There is exactly. continuous yes, disregard for the rule of the law. The fact that I, I don't, feel, exactly I don't feel confident as a Nigerian that if I go to court, 
I w whatever the court gives me, I will get yes, it from yes, my government. Yes. Every Nigerian feels that way. Like before, we will feel like take him to court, take him to court. You can take the government to court. The court, the government the will. No, but I, but now, now we now feel like has been taken away from us. So I, I, I am forced to be quiet. I'm forced to be humble. I'm forced as a Nigerian not to feel confident in my country. Yeah. That is that is not a feeling any Nigerian should have. have. That is not a feeling that we used to have before. We've been in these same democracies yeah. 20 years. Okay, Why are we going back on after 20 years of democracy? <laughs> Okay, let me take this call from Yakub. Yakub, are you there? I'm there, Mariah. Thanks for calling. Go ahead, please. Uh, so good morning, and then good morning to the beautiful mm. audience in the studio. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the court, especially <laughs> Mama Baby one. Uh, Mariah, you see, don't let us be emotional about this uh, station of uh, two words. You see, Mariah, one thing I should let you know is this. In that studio, Every one of you there experience each feeling or our own feeling there. Reason being this, when we are talking about democracy, if not, we are in not, if not that we are in democracy, some of the words that some of us use, we will not be able to use it. Let me quote uh, so uh, When you want to start this uh, uh, protest, the man will say that I'm not clear about what God is going to say. I'm a back on revolution. Morayo, I uh, uh, Mr. Pepper he can pay for this uh, 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 government. I do can pay for them as well. But if they did something wrong, I will tell you. But in this case, well, let me tell you this. This is a person that participates in the election. And then he got 30,000 votes. He got 30,000 votes. And then the other day, he came out as he embarked on revolution. I don't know the meaning of revolution. Maybe you said this as well. Like... Sorry. Okay. Oh. Sorry about that, Yakub. I didn't. I didn't get. Did you hear what he said very well? It was it was hard no, to hear him. No, he was talking okay. about um, the amount, number of votes he could gather at the elections. And yes, he, the and revolution he was calling for his own right to for mm. the revolution. Okay. But we've established that beyond that, yes, he, if he if he, he did uh, contravene any laws, he should go to court. It is the court who will say he's offended the nation. He has not offended the nation. He should be punished. He shouldn't be punished. It is not at anybody's whims and caprices. So that, so that you visit uh, the SSS tomorrow, you are not guaranteed until you know somebody, know somebody, know somebody kind of thing. We should, okay. we should have gone past all of that. Mm. So, yeah, so I remember um, at the time I started the show, we were talking, the, a lot of talk was being done about El Zezeki and his wife being in mm. detention. I mm -hmm. mean, it's been a couple of years since I've been on the show, and this was long before then. And I remember my sentiments at the time was, um, I have people who grew up in the area, in Zaria, and some of the things that they suffered because of him and his following. And as a Nigerian citizen then who I, I would say was not very aware or very knowledgeable about the import. Yes, of, of following court rules. I thought that at least when you put this man that represents a form of violence away and then people are able to flourish, then it's okay. But then I now see for myself, and I'm saying this because I know a lot of Nigerians to make be coming from their ways, if you take away someone that causes trouble mm -hmm. away from the community, from the society, you bring peace. But it is important that we have a place where Illegally. innocent people can right. get justice. Because what happens in, in a case where someone is not innocent, get, um, gets locked away, when you're innocent, too, you will be, you, you'll be faced with the same process where nobody will listen to you. So they can take up any, um, any decisions right. on your life. So it's important that we understand the rule that, the, the, the role of the courts mm. and why it's right. important to follow respected. it so that no innocent person will find so, himself in a situation so had, where they will deny their now, rights. Everybody has, everybody's standing up. I don't know who else is going to take the cue from Punch. Yeah. Um, because um, obviously if we don't stand together on this, a lot of, we're going to see more and, of and, and I'm waiting for what the president will do concerning Punch because there should be, there'll be a reaction. He's in quite quiet. We haven't heard. He has gone off to, is he Egypt to or where he has yeah. gone to within, and nobody's saying anything. If there are no consequences, of course, um, lawlessness will continue. Um, well, even there, just waiting for the thing to pass through the courts because the courts are talking which okay, let me take this because where a judge, a judge had to take over in our Let me chambers. take this call. Christopher, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm listening. Thanks for calling. Go ahead, please. You're live. Hello? Hello. You're live. Go ahead, please. Uh, the problem is, we are, the way Bari is running the government is different. Hello, good morning. Oh, Please, the way Bari is running the government is making people get scared of a normal or a democratic government. Because now, I, with what's going to be, when I read it on Twitter this morning, 
I was really happy because we are really in a regime. If we are going to a regime, we're not more in a democratic government because Buhari has made everybody scared. You can't wake up in the morning, you know, before we, as you said on TV, we go to court. Any small thing, sue him, go to court. But now, if you go to court, you don't know what will happen to you. Because everybody will tell you that, you know, if you go to court, you know the powerful people, the rich ones win. Or if you know somebody in the government, you win the case. It's not like before again. People just win. People just go to court and things happen in the court. Not like the way things go on before. Boy, I made everybody so scared. Mm. All right. Thank you very much. Um, we have to go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. All right, thanks for staying with us. So we'll just um, try to wrap up on the issue of punch because it's a topic we need to probably even mm -hmm. talk about another day properly. But I'd like us to take a few tweets before we bring in our guest. So Honorable Ademola says, the bottom line, bottom line is people should follow the rule of law, full stop. Yeah. I have said it over and over that Nigerians should start talking and this is what is going on now. I, I hope this trend will continue till our voices are heard. Well done, ladies. You are not girls. Uh, Gbade <laughs> Geshe Olai Wadu says, I'm a girl. Dasuki, Elzazaki are national security issues. The mm. money taken by Dasuki caused the death of military guys. Trying to buttress the point for the president to do the things he is trying to do, saying that Shawara also called for a revolution after he lost an election. And we're not seeing, no, see, Dasuki should be held according to the rule of law. Mm. You see, one of the major ways to fight corruption is to enshrine institutions. Mm. And the court itself is an institution that you cannot but you should not. play with the sanctity yeah. of. Yeah. When under your watch, the sanctity of the courts desecrated. is desecrated this way, you are not fighting corruption. Mm. Simple. Uh, unfortunately, we have to wrap up on that. But I said, it, it, the news just broke. <clears throat> so we are still getting other people's reaction. And we're we are expecting that maybe more media houses might take cue and follow cue and, and, and do and speak up against. I mean, you know, other civil society members might speak up against this issue we're discussing. But let's find a brighter angle to this whole uh, yeah, issue. Yeah, and we're going to be discussing agriculture. There's a lot of evidence that agriculture obviously is a tool to end poverty and it can stimulate economic development and lead to higher job and growth creation. Today on the program, we have Mr. Taiwo Oluada Usola. He's an agribusiness expert whose aim is to enlighten us on what we can do to complement the government's efforts and ultimately make good earnings and, and investing in agriculture. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you, man. So it's a bit of a switch from talking about um, the issue of the um, government going against rule of law and then trying to <laughs> take the advantage <laughs> of what the government is doing on agriculture. We, because we there are people who are actually mm. benefiting from this initiative. And it's important that we share this knowledge with our viewers so they can continue to see the opportunities because, hey, we have to live. Mm. So um, could you tell us what the opportunities are in agriculture, especially the fact that people are saying diversify, let's go into farming. But we've had several people come here on the show talk about farming. But I'd like to know what, how does somebody who is in the office mm -hmm. become a farmer, even from your office space? Is it possible? It definitely it is. And um, I would uh, start by talking about the opportunities. Uh, Nigeria presently imports a lot of food. We've talked about that time and again. And um, our annual bill today for importation of food is $22 billion. Mm -hmm. That's um, almost eight, over 8 trillion naira, mm. close to our annual budget. And as a matter of fact, incidentally, if Nigeria would only produce all the food we need, the GDP would grow at 6%, and that would take Nigeria straight out of poverty, every Nigerian. <clears throat> now. And then if we can keep up that pace annually and then step up to import, uh, exportation, particularly in areas where we have agroecological advantages like uh, palm oil, cocoa, and all of that. Before you know it, Nigeria as a nation would um, be one of the leading economies in the world. But then to individuals now, uh, we're looking at a situation where if we as a nation 
every citizen pull our resources together. Because definitely looking at the budget for this year, for example, uh, well, I looked at some of the details <coughs> and then I realized that up till now, we don't have a concise and um, focused direction to meet our actual need as a nation in terms of food. Now, as it is, we have to do for ourselves what the government isn't doing. Okay, so from what you are saying, you at uh, first when you started, I felt I that, oh, okay, well, practical. things are looking rosy in the agri sector because the government has consistently from the first administration emphasized the fact that they were going to diversify into agriculture, they were going to provide loans, they were going to provide financial support. They set up a bank for agriculture um, farmers in Nigeria and it looked like the government had a plan. But what you're saying is that not necessarily do you believe we have a blueprint for agriculture mm -hmm. and how do you think we should approach agriculture as a nation? Very good. Now, uh, today, I would um, say categorically mm. that we don't have a blueprint for agriculture. Mm. Ah, that's yeah, shocking. Sure. Yes. That's what we do for four years. I'm All right. Sure. Let, me, <laughs> let, me, let me explain to you. It's not like there are no plans. It's not like there are no pockets. pockets yeah. Exactly. We, what we need to take Nigeria out of the woods, especially with food security, is to have a, 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 con a concerted uh, effort where we have a single umbrella plan. Mm -hmm. Let me give you a, 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 a concept that we are <coughs> developing and we've been, we have actually started um, ex executing. Create clusters mm. of farmers in particular uh, uh, regions, mm. particular areas, according to the agroecological advantage of that area. Let me use, let's say Kebi, for example. Right. You create a cluster of farmers, mm. 250 of them, mm -hmm. to produce rice. Mm -hmm. In that same cluster, you, cr you, create, you have some other farmers producing cattle mm. and chicken. Mm. Now, with, within that ecosystem, I have a processing unit mm. that processes rice to produce uh, rice um, uh, uh, shaft to feed, to feed the, the animals. The animals produce their waste. You put it in a digester, produce fertilizer, produce the biogas to power the machine for, for, for processing mm. uh, rice. Mm. And then at the end of the day, you cut the cost of production of every of these goods to the barest minimum. Mm. At, that, at that rate, we could get to a point where we are selling a bag of rice for 6,000 naira. Oh, 6,000. Yes. <laughs> if you could just create such ecosystem and then put the whole value chain within the same ecosystem from so, the farm to the table. So, so quickly. Um, is it not we Nigerians who are now the problem? If what the example you're giving is what, when we when the government was going to re introduce the Ruga and all the other farming, <laughs> it was supposed to be like a satellite town for this kind of thing you talk about to capture all the chains and put them in one place. In my was because just we were thinking that you know it would be, of course it would be across the across the mm. political zones, exactly. across states. Exactly. It was the the policy itself or the blueprint. It was like a blueprint. What Tokba was asking to capture all of this but because livestock was involved and it was a political time when cattle was a problem we didn't read nigerians didn't sit down to read through the few of us who read through were seeing positivity and people could slap us for even trying to see positive let me jump in I, I was, there's a difference between ruga and the nltp and uh, the NLP. nlfp mm -hmm. yeah. the farming the one that the vice president proposed mm -hmm. that was plan. that the uh, yes that's that the nltf that was no that the Ruga, set, the Ruga um, release, press release, was very brief. Mm -hmm. The one, the research carried out the by the VP was an entire yeah, exactly. for, the, the and for the National Livestock, 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 livestock yes. Yes. Formation. So, NL, NLTP. NLTP. Right. NLTP. so they so, say it's Ruga redesigned. So that NLTP mm -hmm. only covered one aspect of agriculture. It is still just covering livestock. We don't have the one that covers 
the farming parts where you have an ecosystem that gives you okay. rice so in, and so other yeah, areas together. To so allow you still them holistic. coexist. Mm. But the farmers had a problem that they would they would um, uh, tread into their zone mm. to, to, to feed, mm -hmm. to graze. Mm -hmm. So they didn't want to hear of it mm. at all. Mm -hmm. the, the possibility of them coexisting would capture this. Okay, let me, let me just uh, respond to that. Mm. The truth is that, and um, I dare to say, that the way we rear animals mm. Here. in Nigeria mm -hmm. is, to say the least, <sighs> well, I, I'm trying to be as conservative as possible here. Yeah. It's, 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 um, it's, uh, it's disheartening. A nation like Holland that produces the, 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 uh, the largest volume of milk mm -hmm. and meat in the world don't graze the animals openly. Mm. They provide uh, uh, tranch, uh, uh, branches, branches mm. where you, 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 you feed your animals. Mm. As a matter of fact, let me tell you something. If you feed your animals with hydroponic fodder, for example, hydroponic fodder you produce from wheat, rice, other grains, maize, within nine days, mm. you will convert the weight of your maize and uh, uh, increase it by times nine. 90%. You know, and with a lot of vitamins and all of that in need for the animals, mm -hmm. so the animals are fed better so uh, within the same, uh, within a confinement where from what they then produce, you can, you can feed other things other farmers do. So, well, if I may just say this, I think the government just has to look inward and ask a question. Are we really sincere with what we call food production and food security okay. in Nigeria. Okay, so I'm a little confused because I feel like the government has, especially when it comes to rice production, is taking some steps that are not very popular with the people and more in keeping with what the rice farmers would want. So they are stopping all forms of um, importations. Um, a lot of rice uh, marketers have come out to to complain about the methods that they're being used just to give rice farmers the opportunity to be able to grow enough food and have Nigeria self sufficient. So when you say the government isn't doing much, I'm like, so what does, I mean, isn't that, is, yeah, what do you want? Isn't that something that the government has done one place? Then secondly, because I'm really into nutrition and health and things like that. And when people talk about how you have to put your cattle in one place and feed them with vitamins and things like that, for most of us, we're learning the importance of actually letting your livestock Graze. free range grazing and things like that. And to compare Holland's type of cattle with our own Nigeria uh, kind of cattle, sometimes I feel like it's misinforming the public. Mm. There, there's a reason why their cattle can give them the sort of milk that it gives them. And also their meat has also been in the news about how we need to be careful not to eat some food that are like genetically modified yeah. compared to our own naturally grown foods and livestock. <clears throat> so those are important things that when we talk about what government is doing, we should, you know, when we balance speak it. about it, we should balance it. Government, I think, is doing, I'm not even one for, I'm not really in support of the method that they're using, but to say that the government isn't doing anything, I just feel that it's not... No, 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 no. that's not what I said. No, that's not what I said. As a matter of fact, let me put it this way. Government has programs, yeah. uh, for, uh, uh, budgets for this ministry, that <laughs> are state all within the agricultural uh, industry and all of that. Let me give you a, a pointer here. Within... 2000, uh, 2020 budget, we have money budgeted for at least <laughs> 50 parastatals within the agricultural industry, many of them research institutions. Mm. But you find out that for all the researches these people carry out, mm. the results they get, the sort of uh, benefits the industry can achieve from those results, there's a gap. Mm -hmm that prevents this knowledge from being transmitted to the real I, industry. I, no, mm. I, the whole I, so I think it's I have a contrary view, being that we, Nigerians are not taking interest in this thing. So I did an agro-investment just last month, and the agro-investment was based on cash, um, no, um, um, orange flesh sweet potato, OFSP. Now, the OFSP research was carried out in Umudike. It's a particular kind of 
um, sweet potato that matures within four, four months and you would get your return on investment. So there <coughs> are some research going on. When I, read, when, I, when I got the investment information and I read the research, I went online and I checked. So we don't have natively orange sweet um, potato here, but it's in other countries. What we have is the purple one and the white one that we all eat, the white one and the purple one. But this orange one was a research carried out and some people are taking advantage of it, but I wouldn't have heard about it if I didn't join an investment club. So the challenge is that there, you know, there's the information. Mm. There's information out there that Nigerians are not, we, we, the young people are not interested. With a portion of land, you can farm that and start making money every so, four months in agriculture so right here in Nigeria. I just answered my question. I wanted to ask you that, you know, when there's gap, this opportunity. How can individuals, because we're talking opportunities in exactly. agriculture, right. how right. can individuals jump in? Where are the opportunities? How, how can we address right. them? Very good. <laughs> now, we, uh, there's a present trend of what I call a modified cooperative mm. agricultural mm. Um, investment programs mm. that various companies uh, do. Uh, we also do that, mm. where we uh, aggregate people who are interested mm. in a particular value chain, pro produce what uh, we propose to them, mm. carry out the whole value chain, sell the goods, and pay them returns from what we produce. For example, one of our uh, recent projects is Niger Rice Project, mm. where we aggregate people who are interested in producing rice, provide, mon uh, aggregate farmers within a location, a location provide them everything <coughs> they need, including the knowledge and the best possible input, mm. and then they grow the rice, we take it, we process, we sell, mm. and then we, 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 right. we give... Uh, you know, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So these opportunities are there. There are a host of uh, companies who are into that now. Right. Uh -huh. But the question really is, many of, um, many of these things that we, we, we do, mm. as, I mean, let's say companies who are in the agricultural uh -huh. space, mm. there are too many obstacles mm. That, mm. Uh, that don't allow you to yeah. optimize the outputs and results. Mm. Let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll take a few tweets and stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your View will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. Right, so we're going to wrap up on this. So tell us exactly, uh, you were talking about the opportunities available. So we obviously need to um, look for the various um, angles, the value chain within the ecosystem and see how we can do. And I like the idea of the clusters in various communities. Now, the people are listening to you right now and they're thinking, where do I start from? Okay. Some of us think that it means that we have to take our own hoe and cutlass and start a farm and we, do, we can't do that. So what <laughs> other ways can we be part of it? Okay, good. <laughs> well, you don't have to take O oh, and cutlass and all of that. As a matter of fact, the way agriculture is today, you don't even need O oh, and cutlass anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but in the real sense, you as a nine to five person can actually uh, look out for uh, companies that are into agribusiness okay. who produce goods on your behalf okay. and then pay you returns, agreed uh, returns. Can we trust Nigerians to that? You know, of course. Uh, I, I, that is, yeah. I didn't tell anybody because... <laughs> Just in case you lose money, I'd be... Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> of course. As a matter of fact, I can... Is it risk? I, uh, of course. But I can mention, uh, apart from my company, I can mention at least four or five other companies today Happy. who are paying well. Oh. And people are okay, maybe I'll invest their, in it. Like, that's a good... I think I'll take a number. I'll people see. are having their returns. So if I get their, my returns, I'll share the... I'll remind... I'll tell you so also but, and the truth is that, yeah. and the truth is that, for me, yeah. it goes beyond just personal rewards, right. mm -hmm. national reward, exactly. right. because the then, days. because you can't it's really right. expect Bank of Agri alone or Central Bank to fund yeah. agricultural mm -hmm. production in mm -hmm. Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So, but when we all, for example, you know that in a year I spent, let's say, a hundred thousand buying rice, mm. find a way to get that money ahead, put it in rice production. Mm -hmm. mm. And then you are, you are not only providing rice for Nigeria, you are also making money for yourself. Yeah. So at the end of the day, yeah. everybody is happy. Let me take a few things before we run off right now. I just want to ask a quick question. Um, like how much are we talking about here? Can a regular average Nigerian be able to invest 
in something like that? Okay, well, for us, we have like two cadres. One is 45,000, one is uh, 265,000 for Niger rice. Okay. For um, the, the other one we do that pertains. That, that's your own. Okay, okay, well, for general, for, 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 yeah, there are different types. Yeah. Yes, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. for, no for cash, uh, for um, farm crowding, for example, yeah. you have something of 50,000 so and all of that. So online. you can go online, online search, and, and Google, see what's convenient for you, exactly. Uh, and then you can, you can decide. And then be part of the drive to provide food for Nigeria. That's the bottom line. So go to Agro Investments online, find various companies where you can participate and see what you can invest. Best to help you to always do part of it money away. We'll check that they are verifiable payers before you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on that note, we're going to go on a break. When we come back, we'll bring in a guest who actually she's doing something really interesting and remarkable. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned, your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thanks for staying with us. Labisi Shufolaho is an entrepreneur with a heart of gold. She has been using her private resources to feed primary school children daily for three years through her own foundation. Yeah. Today, she's here with us to tell us her journey. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Good to have you. You <laughs> can call us on 070 806 68014. You can also tweet us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your VTV so we can read your tweets. All right, tell us about your foundation. You're feeding children every single day yeah. in a school <laughs> with your resources. Tell us about this okay, and how it so started. We started 20, uh, 2015, October mm. 2015. Um, it's something I've always wanted to do. and. Uh, you know, because of the, the large scale of the children that we know need mm. this, you know, stopped me from doing it um, for as long as I've wanted to. But, you know, I clock, uh, like I said, 40 some years back and I thought, okay, you really need to do this. And then, you know, the, watching a movie helped. Mm. I start from where you are. You can't do everything at the same time. So we decided Why that. children? Because they're the vulnerable one mm. and... Um, and not just children, primary school children. We're not doing for secondary school because mm. we want them to know that food is a basic amenity. Mm. They don't have to think of where food is coming from because it's not just their rights, their... You know, when I heard the story, the first thing I asked was, is she a billionaire? <laughs> <laughs> no. How to do this? And I mean, you've already answered it. You know, you're okay. starting from where I you am. find... Yeah, mm -hmm. where you find... Why? Do you think that way? Why do you have that kind of mindset? Why okay. is it important to you? Okay, um, like, you know, so many people say so many things about this country, Nigeria. Mm. Yes, we can say it. Mm -hmm. But um, I realized that most of the people, I dare say, in power now, came through this journey. And the greed and the kind of thing I see, I realized that because people had come up from thinking or come up from not wanting to be hungry again. They gather what their generations on Bon Cano cannot mm -hmm. even use, you know? You. So I thought if these children, you know, realize that first and foremost, hunger is out of the way, mm. they'll be able to creatively think mm -hmm. and do something for the country. And we won't have the kind of decadence we have. So thank you, know, you right now. You should have just done the debate at the Wimbis. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, 2015 to 2019, that's four years. Mm -hmm. And I know that no matter how laudable the project is, when you start at some point, <laughs> it will become overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I, have you ever hit that bottom where, hey, give me, what did I even put myself into? Mm -hmm. How do I continue? Where exactly do you get the will to continue? Do you get support? Do you get, you know, do, do you source for funds? Do you, at any point, how exactly do you make it work continue? Thank you. Okay, so when we're starting out, we wanted, um, we didn't want to go around looking for money because we knew uh, Nigeria has it is, you know. So I was able to, by the grace of God, set, out, set aside fund for three years. Mm -hmm. And uh, after the third year, I'll, you know, I have some people I could talk to to say, okay, you sponsor a classroom, you sponsor okay. this and that and all that. But I couldn't because I was, um, I had to deal with some family issues. So after, and then of course, because my project coordinator already had that money, she just went ahead to do what she needed to do. So um, 
when I realized that, oh, we would need fund because this is a project I can't afford to stop, thought about it, prayed about it, and you know, God gave an idea of um, a product whereby we could put out there and for everybody that buy, we can use it to fund, okay. continue so funding. Like yes, yeah, something yeah. like that. We can so for everybody that, so you, you have a product where yeah. for every everything you sell, it yeah. goes to yes. feeding the children. So for every carton we sell, we feed two kids with, with ah, uh, part of the proceeds. Nice. <laughs> so as of today, how many schools are you feeding? Okay, so where What's your desire? Where in, uh, our desire is to feed, go to five schools per year. Okay. Right now we're still in one because every time we get children enrolled in that school. Yeah, yeah. because of more yes, because, because of, food. of yeah. the feeding. We started with two fifty, yeah. now they're about five. If I knew where the school was. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you have more five hundred children 500 now. Five fifty actually. Five fifty. Oh, wow. Wow. And you're now. hoping to have five more. Yes. That's expensive. Every, you have you need support. Yeah. Yes, we do. <laughs> we do, but we're hoping that the product will be such that, that you know, once people buy we will continue feeding, so even if we don't. I, I've read a lot about social enterprise, and I think Nigerians don't know much about this. It's yeah. where a, a business funds yeah. impactful Johnson. life. Yes. You know, so you don't have to beg people for money. Just mm -hmm. buy my product. I'm not begging you to feed children. Yeah. By buying this product, you're already feeding yes. children. But um, your, your product is also still adding value. Yes. Why, why, how did you think of doing that product, and what would you... Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I have a girlfriend who works, of course, in a bank and um, had a very bitter quarrel with the husband. Ah, what happened? You know, they both closed at the same time, you know, but she went to the market, got the product to, you know, cook at home. And, ingredients. Yeah, ingredients mm -hmm. to cook at home. And when she got home, she was about to put it together and never took light. <laughs> and because of that, she couldn't do what she needed to do. And it was like, oh, you didn't plan well, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, so I thought about the fact that, okay, you have to go to the market, you have to use light to put this together. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Don't we have something that you can just pour in the, in the, mm. on, on the, the stove market. and food is ready? You know, so that was where the idea of the product So what's the from. product exactly? Okay, so it's blended pepper that's already parboiled. Oh, yeah, yeah, lata. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yeah, lata. Oh, fantastic. Yes. Please, I hope you yes. our audience. We did. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Come here and not bring gift for our audience. So you bought pepper for us. Yes. Oh, nice. Nice. Fantastic. So okay. now, so you sell it or am you? Yes. Or you right, give it right out? Now, no. Right now, we we already have um, corporate Nigeria that's taking it of us, of us. And uh, oh. when we had the launch with the vice president's wife last month, yeah. you know, we had people because our project this December is to send cartons to the IDP camps, oh. you know, to the children in the IDP camps. Fantastic. So, yeah. 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 so you're, you're going to be sending cartons of this product to yes. the IDP camps? Yes, we're sending to well, the who's IDP paying camps. for that? That's the company. Okay, no. Um, we had uh, um, people come to say, okay, Support. take some oh, to the IDP wow. camps. So as we're taking to the IDP camps, we're also feeding our children because each yeah, carton feed, 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 feed two children. children. Oh, yes. each carton feeds yes. two, two children. children. Oh, fantastic. Yes. You. Are you looking at orphanages? Yeah, or just uh, yes, but for now. So IDP camps, camps and schools, mm. yeah. Mm. So the, what, the benefit of, I, I know that uh, nationwide, people know that, uh, worldwide rather, <coughs> when you provide food for children, they come to school more. Yeah. Their attendance would improve mm -hmm. because beyond them coming to the school for yes. learning, they come for yes. food. How has, uh, do you have like a statistics showing the difference between what before you started yes. and the um, attendance rate when they started getting yes. food when they went to Yes, school? like I said, we started with 250 and we've increased by, I mean, now we're 550. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's a testament because mm -hmm. every every um, every term we get people to yeah. enroll, and then what we're doing for empowerment also is we tell the children, you know, we set up like a competition whereby the children that are doing very well, we employ their mothers to oh. be to be in, to be caterer. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Sustainable yeah, plan. Ecosystem. Yeah, Fantastic. <laughs> That's so nice. I want to talk about the quality of that product. Okay. Because because I want to see the product. Because because please, charity. Charity. please bring it over. I, I want to see what it looks like. Please bring so it over. Because people think because it's charity, it might just be anything. No. Just anything to sell. Okay. No. Since you put a cost behind it. Yeah. So, mm. how, what exactly was the research that went into the production of okay. this 
final product that you have and you know because we even know pepe yes. you know it's seasonal yes. and they have species yes. uh -huh. how do you do all that uh, what okay. was the was it? at the package buy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now pepe oh but pepe they in the package so like this it's really yeah, fancy wow. so okay go ahead <laughs> okay so because um um by the grace of god i've traveled you know and i know what is obtainable out there okay um i wanted something that uh, um, something that will come out of Nigeria and I'll be proud of. Something that, you know, um, because, you know, you go into Walmart and you see their aisles and you see mm. things, you know. I also mm -hmm. have a store where we have fantastic product. Mm. But, you know, um, there's this thing in Yoruba that says you eat with your eyes first mm. before you, mm. you actually taste ah. what is in there. Mm. And they come with fantastic product, but I can't sell it because of the packaging. Well packaged. Mm. So I thought, no, we should... We're trying to compete with the international world. We should be able to do something that is befitting. Mm -hmm. you know? This is so really nice. That was what... Really but this can cook one pot of stew? Uh, it depends on the family. <laughs> but a carton, a carton should this last. This can make a pot of stew. Yeah. This can make a pot of because stew. Because it's, it's thick, you have to pour water, you know. Nice. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Very cool. Nice. Yeah. Hmm. So um, for the schools, is there a particular type of school that you're interested yes. in? Are they less, private? Less yeah. privileged school. So mm. well, it's it's because these school. children are children that you know, before we go there, they go hawking in the morning before coming to school. Oh my goodness. By the time they come, they're tired. So even the teacher, I mean, they can't hear anything. The teacher is teaching yes. them because they're already tired, you know. So those are the, we're looking for schools that... So which state is this win. school you're working with presently? They're in Lagos here. Yeah. Mm. Oh, fantastic. You know, this is well thought out. So this yeah. is not someone who has just put out a product just mm -hmm. because no. some people may say, oh, maybe I could get international recognition no. or an award or mm -hmm. some funding or come on TV and just get recognized. Just want to go around begging. Yes, but, <laughs> but you have thought this through. You've yeah. thought out the charity part even more than the product. Well done. Thank you. So we'll celebrate so we'll definitely support you. I would I'll order a few boxes Thank you. so I can help with the uh, with the, with feeding so children. Much. And Thank it's important you. that we support you, you to ensure that young children, especially in public schools, are fed. Because mm. you said you've seen a difference. <laughs> children come to school when they when see they that. And food. Now tell me well, let me last question. The kind of food you pro you give. Oh. I, I mean there was a day, I mean, I was seeing pictures and I was like, what kind of food do you give these okay. children? Please. Okay, so <laughs> We, um, the, the, I don't know what to call it now, the standard, the standard is that what, what my children cannot eat, we don't, we don't oh, offer God it. God bless you. So, <laughs> thank you. so, so we give, I mean, even the mothers will come and be like, what is this? We give them, you know, grapes because it's a balanced diet. Yeah. We give them the food, we give them the fruit and, you know. Could you just tell us specifically what one on, okay, so, on a Monday? So, for example, yeah. on a Monday, we give them, we, we give them baked beans, you know? Oh, with no, yam. so fancy! <laughs> and yam. <laughs> Fantastic. It's very important. We need to have people yeah. yeah. doing this. And you don't need to be a billionaire to do this. More, yeah. more, than, more than anything, we mm. want to be an inspiration where yes. different Nigerians can come together to say, let's do this, let's do this. Oh, because yeah. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. So I have a question for the audience. It says, okay. will the audience be willing to pay for the product to help the kids she's looking after? Yeah. Yes. Yes. This one, she's giving them. You will buy the next one. This one, you, she's yeah. giving us. <laughs> so, <laughs> but don't worry. But thank you so much thank for you. this. We really appreciate it. And we'll definitely ensure that everybody gets it. And I will definitely order a couple of boxes thank so you. I can support your, thank your work. You. Thank, thank you. you. That's all we can take on the show. And we also give them, Ada Small gave us mugs for you guys. So please, thanks to Ada Small for the lovely mugs and bags. I, can't, I, I don't have it here. And then Cream Slices also gave us this beautiful cake. Thanks so much again to Cream Slices for, their, for being so consistent. All right? That's all we can say. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.